Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be learning about the skewness of a distribution. Now we define skewness as the measure of asymmetry or the measure of lopsidedness of a data distribution. Now in order to understand asymmetry, let's first look at what a symmetrical distribution is. So a symmetrical data distribution looks something like this. It is said to have no skewness. So a symmetrical distribution, as you can see, the left side of the distribution and the right side of the distribution are mirror images of each other. And these mirror images imply that the data distribution is symmetrical and there is no skewness. However, let's say we did not have this diagram. We did not have the graph. How, how do we find out using just the data that this data is a symmetrical distribution? Well, we can calculate the mean, median, and mode. We can calculate values for these three. And if the three values are the same, then that means that the data distribution is symmetrical. So as you can see, the mean, median, and mode all lie over here on the same line. They are all equal, and therefore this distribution is symmetrical. Another way to identify, another way to identify that this distribution is symmetrical is given through the fact that these quartiles, as you can see, Q3, Q2, and Q2 and Q1, the difference between the quartiles, the difference between the quartiles, or the separation between these quartiles will be the same. These gaps are going to be equal. So let's say Q1 lies somewhere over here, Q2 lies somewhere over here, and Q3 lies somewhere over here. These are all approximate values, but this distance between Q1 and Q2 will be the same distance as Q2, Q3. And therefore, this is another property that if we calculate the values of all the quartiles and see that the difference between the second and the third quartile is equal to the difference between the second and the first quartile, and if these gaps are the same, then this is another property that your data distribution is symmetrical or your data distribution has no skewness. And now let's talk about positive skewness, or in other words, we can say right skewness. Well, first here we can see, we can see this tapering on the right side of the graph we can see that this graph is tapering towards the right. We can also see that the majority of the data lies over here, lies on the left side of the data distribution. As we can see that this bar is very high, which implies that the frequency is high, which also implies majority of the data lies here. What else do we notice? We can also notice that there are some extremely high values. These are all values, and as we go to the right, your va the data value increases. We can see that there are very few extremely high values. So as you can see, these are the majority of the data distribution points. However, these are some very few but very high, extremely high data values on the right side of the graph. And now, and now let's talk about the mean, median, and mode. Why is the mode over here? To understand why is the mode over here, well, what is the mode? Mode is the bulk of the data. It gives you the calculation of the bulk of your data or the data value which has the fr highest frequency. So the mode, the mode falls right under the peak of your data distribution and therefore your mode lies somewhere over here. And now median is always the middle of the data, so the median will lie somewhere over here, the middle of the data distribution. And now mean. Remember when I said that the mean is affected by extremely high data values. Let's say you have a data set and your numbers are 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then randomly you get two data values, which is 105 and 110. These are two extremely high data values. They're, very, they're only two data values. However, these are very high data values. And due to those very high data values, your mean gets pulled to the right. Your mean gets pulled to that higher number, and your average gets affected. And this is why the value of your mean will be greater than the median, and that will in turn be greater than the mode. And now in terms of quartiles, let's talk about quartiles. Well, your first quartile, you know, will be somewhere over here, Q1. Your second quartile will also lie somewhere over here, Q2, which is basically your median. And your third quartile will lie towards more towards the right. Let's say it's somewhere over here. So as you can see, as you can see that the distance between Q1 and Q2 is lesser than the distance between Q2 and Q3. And therefore, this is why this statement is correct, that the difference between the first two quartiles is less than the dif difference between the second two quartiles. So if, for example, the question asks you to comment on the distribution, not only will you talk about the skewness and say it has right skewness or no skewness or left skewness, you will also talk about the mean median mode and you will also talk about the quartiles. And now lastly, lastly, let's talk about the left skewness or the negative skewness. So as we can see, negative skewness is literally the opposite of what's happening with the positive skewness. 
the tapering, the tapering that is happening to the distribution is now towards the left side of the distribution. So on positive skewness, it's tapering towards the right and negative skewness, it's tapering towards the left. And now, now let's have a look at the mode. Mode always lies right under the, the highest frequency of the distribution. So as you can see, the mode lies over here because the majority of the data distribution lies over here and therefore your mode is over here. Median, on the other hand, is just somewhere in the middle. And now, what about the mean? As you can see, there are very small extreme values to the left. So let's say you have values which is around 50, 55, 60, 65. And let's say you have some extreme values such as 1, 2, and 3. These are extremely low values compared to the rest of the distribution. But they're just a few and they lie on the left side of the distribution. And that causes, that causes the mean to be pulled to the left. And that is why the mean value is lower than the median value, which is in turn lower than your mode value. And therefore, your mean is lesser than your median, lesser than your mode. This is a property of negative skewness. And now, if we talk about quartiles, let's say Q1 lies somewhere over here. Q2 will lie somewhere over here and Q3 somewhere over here. Because majority of the distribution lies over here. So as you can see, the difference between Q1 and Q2 is much greater than the difference between Q2 and Q3. Therefore, Q2 minus Q1 is greater than Q3 minus Q2. These are all properties used to explain or comment on the data distribution when they ask us not only about the skewness, but also to further explain why is a data distribution left skewed, right skewed, or it has no skewness at all. And now to summarize, there are three kinds of skewness. No skewness, which is an absolute symmetrical distribution. Your mean, median, and mode are all equal. Then you have your right skewness, where you have majority of your values on the left side of the graph. Howe however, you have some extremely high values to the right. Your mean is greater than your median, which is greater than your mode. And lastly, negative skewness has majority of the data distribution to the right side of the graph. It has some extreme low values to th towards the left side of your graph. And therefore, your mean is lesser than your median, which is lesser than your mode.